Although in Sand Slash is never really used, but it can be better than people think. It's a unique Ice and Steel type that has a solid base 100 in attack, along with 120 defense. It also becomes extremely fast in Snow with its ability Slush Rush. With our speed doubled and the new 50% buff to defense that Snow gives, Sand Slash can usually find an opening to Swords Dance. Now stab options like Triple Axle or Icicle Crash can hit extremely hard, along with Stab Iron Head. We toss on a Life Orb for an extra 30% to damage, and this thing is a massive threat that not enough people respect. Alright look, it's been enough time. I had to bust out the Alolan Sand Slash, because this thing on a snow team is actually insane. It always seems to provide way more value than you'd expect, and really nobody puts enough respect on this thing, so we gotta teach them a lesson. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now before we jump into the battle, I wanna give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, one of my favorites, Surfshark VPN. Traveling the world in just one click is a pretty sweet concept, and Surfshark lets you do just that. Changing your IP address with the tap of a finger comes with a lot of perks. While some benefits are for your online safety, like encrypting your data so that it won't be able to be stolen by sketchy websites, it does also have some really fun perks. One of my favorites is being able to access some fresh streaming content. No matter where you live, and if you're bored of the Netflix options, you can just flip on the Surfshark and change your location to Japan and see what they're working with over there. You can also make sure that you're getting the best deals when you're online shopping. Websites often show prices based off location or the device you're using, and you can bypass this by just turning on the Surfshark VPN and make sure that you get the best deals when you're buying your next flight. Also, one single subscription allows you unlimited devices, meaning you can share your account with as many people as you want, and you can all enjoy a more secure and private online life. Right now you can use my code Hayden for an extra 4 months of Surfshark. If you click that link in the description you can take advantage of this solid deal and I promise you will not regret it. And let's go ahead and hop into the match. Alright so this team I'm working with does have a couple different threat options. I like to think of the Sand Slash paired with the Obama Snow in the Snow is kind of the main mode here. So I decided to lead off with the Azelf knowing that I can just get some fast Stealth Rock here. And they actually end up leading with the Delphox and this thing it's kind of a little bit of a problem, of course Azelf cannot really touch it, and a flamethrower is an easy 2 hit KO. But I do want to prioritize getting up that stealth rock as usual, it's going to be able to break potential sashes, and just be good for some switches. So, I decide now, I don't have much that wants to come in on Delphox, but the best option is going to be this Pyroar. I can come in knowing that they're probably just going to flamethrower, I can take a nice little resisted attack, and the best thing is that Pyro is actually just a little bit faster than the uh, Mozilla Firefox over there. So I come in on the Flamethrower. It of course does do a lot of damage because Pyro is built like a damn paper bag. And I can then go for the Hyper Voice. Now I know that's not going to quite kill, but honestly, I just need some chip on this thing. It does do over half and also activates a little bit of Throat Spray because that breath stanks. Now this does allow them to fire off the Psy Shock. And surprisingly, I'm actually able to live, which is solid because now... I am in fact faster and there's not much that wants to switch into a plus one boosted nice little stab hyper voice here. So I am able to of course outspeed that takes care of the Delphox and honestly that feels nice because that thing was just kind of a menace to the squad. So now on the revenge switch they decide to go into the Jirachi and while this thing could have potentially come in on that hyper voice they probably just didn't want to risk me predicting that and hitting it with a flamethrower. So as the Jirachi comes in, it tells me for sure this thing is Choice Scarf. The only reason why you go into this is if you know you're going to outspeed, and the only way it's able to do that is being Scarfed. And honestly, I don't have a whole lot of switch-ins here. I just decide I'm going to sack off the Pyroar, because now that's going to allow to the, kind of the rest of the team to get something going here. Honestly, this Jirachi is a little bit of a problem as well, and we all know the powers of Scarf Jirachi being able to literally get that 60% Iron Head flinch is literally insane. So what I decided to do is I'm actually going to go into the Frosted Mini Wheat just to go ahead and make it snow out here. And of course Obama Snow's Big Ice type ass does not want to take an Iron Head, but I do have a different icy fella that does, and that is the Alolan Sand Slash. Ready to get some cold cuts out here. We are making sandwiches for the whole damn squad. So I can take the Iron Head nicely, of course, also I get that 50% boost in defense from the snow being up, which is amazing, and I can take this opportunity to go for a nice little sword stance. The, you know, the Jirachi really does not have much to hit me in general, and this was just the perfect opportunity 
to uh, make the cold cuts even sharper. So I get that Swords Dance as they actually end up switching into the Feraligator. And at this point at plus two attack with a Life Orb, and Earthquake is a super high chance to kill, and that is gonna take care of the Gator with the Bubble Butt, and that is amazing. That Stealth Rock Chip put it in range to be, I think like almost like a 90% chance for that to kill with a non-stab, just neutral move. And honestly, Sand Slash demands the respect. So. Now in the revenge, they decide to go back into the Jirachi, kind of thinking maybe they bust out the Terra. I am, of course, fast as hell in the snow. We are literally zooming, and an Earthquake does just take care of the Jirachi. They really do not have a lot that can outspeed or really deal with this thing, and it's going to come down to uh, kind of snow being up and also my life orb doing its thing. So now they're going to go ahead and bust out the Latio. So here's the thing. I'm running Ice School Crash on this set, mostly just because... While Triple Axel does do more damage, I find myself literally missing the second and the third one way too damn much. Plus, with plus two, it doesn't really matter. They do actually end up going for the Terra. I obviously just clicked the Ice Cold Crash regardless, and it turns out to be the Terra Psychic, which is great for me, knowing that they do not resist is uh, honestly fine, because with that Swords Dance, my attack is doubled, and here is why Alolan Sand Slash does not play games. Without a resisted hit, an Ice Cold Crash is enough to knock that thing out. Luckily, we do not miss. And they burn the Terra and also use up the Latios, which is amazing. And while we're just slowly knocking ourselves out with a Life Orb, that little bit of extra damage is super clutch. And I'm telling you, you get this thing in the snow and it is actually insane. So now they can bring in the Sparse, generally known to be a pretty difficult guy to kill, unless you got this kind of head. I go for that Iron Head and that is just going to bop that fool and takes care of the, the Dun Sparse. So the final Mon is actually going to end up being the Mandibuzz. And the main priority in this match was just setting up this Sand Slash. Finding the position to get the snow up, bringing this thing in safely to ensure as many turns of snow as possible. I knew that I had great coverage against this, uh, this matchup as long as I was able to get the Swords Dance. And they're just going to go ahead and bail because that Mandibuzz did not need to be cut the hell up today. So that is going to be the end of match one. And you now know the true potential that the Sand Slash has. So going into match two here, looking at the team preview... We see one of the exact reasons why I wanted to start messing around with the Alolan Sand Slash, and that is because I have been sick and tired of freaking Alolan Ninetales running around, setting up Aurora Veils, bringing up its snow. Sand Slash is one of the greatest ways to actually counter that because not only can we use its snow against it, but also we have a four times stab super effective Iron Head against it. So we're going to see if we can't use their own snow against them and get the old Icy Boy rolling. So this time, as I saw the Glamora, they're definitely going to lead off with that. And Azelf does have a pretty solid position here in having you know, the type advantage. But also, I'm able to just get up that Stealth Rock for free, essentially. And unless they go for the turn one Mortal Spin, it's probably going to stick around. So they instead actually just go for the Power Gem, which is a little bit annoying because it does a nice chunk. Breaks my Focus Sash. And at this point, I'm like, well, I should probably get some chip on this thing. It's likely Focus Sash. I can go for the Psy Shock, hit it on the special side so it doesn't set up any Toxic Spikes. And I bring it down to red health, which is solid, but they actually end up going for that mortal spin. It is going to both poison me and get rid of the, the stealth rock over there. And the stealth rock is, I want that up because I do see things like the serral edge in the back. And I know that in general, the rocks are just going to be helpful. So I decide since they actually don't have the stealth rock up of their own, I can actually save the Azelf. And a good middle ground play for me here is to go into Doug Dimmodome, owner of the damn Dimsdale Dimmodome. And that is because either they expect another Psy Shock and bring in the Dark type in the Roaring Moon, or they just attack here. Regardless, Doug comes in pretty safely. Now, they do actually end up making a switch. Camera gets a little fuckered there, but uh, they end up going into the Roaring Moon, which is honestly perfect. And what's even better is that this thing does have the booster energy, so... It's going to go ahead and boost that attack with the Protosynthesis, and that's just fantastic because it does use that booster energy up. Now, the next time this comes in, it's not going to have uh, that benefit of the old free attack boost. So there is the option for them to Earthquake if they have the coverage. Turns out they are actually going to end up switching. They likely just don't have the Earthquake, and they're going to end up going into Puke Green Scizor, and uh, old Booger Boy over here takes the same strange stream. St strange steam. We can tongue twister out here. Basically, we pee on him with the strangest stream possible, and I know I have the coverage with the flamethrower. I also know that I'm literally max defense on this thing, so I can take a bullet punch no problem, and then we just roast and toast him with the flamethrower. The fire coverage on the fairy fools is always, always seems to come in clutch. So, Caesar going down is actually really nice for kind of my late game, because it's one of the mons that would be able to both take an attack from Sand Slash 
and just kind of deal back like a close combat in return. So now that on the revenge switch, they actually decide to go into the Quackle Vault. Now this fella is actually going to go ahead and bust out the Terra. And as I'm looking at this, I'm like, you know, this thing, it can't really knock me out here. I'm at half. I'm defensive. What's the guy going to do? Turns out they're actually going to go ahead and bust out the biggest bull cut of all time. Go for that Terra ground and also the Terra Blast. So I'm like, well, shit, I am in fact not levitating and that is going to kill me so the ter the terra while it is a bit unfortunate i'm honestly kind of fine with that when it's a terror like this in kind of a mid game i know that it's not going to be something that can stop like an Al alolan sand slash sweep and i am definitely fine with that so here's the thing this duck poses an interesting kind of situation where i know that i need to get my snow up and of course i have to go into the obama snow what happens here is of course i'm you know, threatened by like a close combat of course but all I really need to do is get that Icy Rock to activate that snow for 8 turns, and then I should be pretty much in the money for a little Sand Slash. So, as they go for the close combat, that's exactly what I want them to do. Now, the reason why this thing's kind of a scary situation is if it starts to, you know, boost up its speed along with that Moxie in the form of going for, like, Aqua Steps, that's when things can get bad. I do not need this thing to be faster. So, they kill me with the close combat, uh, you know, they get another Moxie, which is fine. This thing is at plus 2 attack. However, at this point, I feel like it's kind of in my best interest to go into the Azelf. I know that I'm faster here, and I can try to get up my Stealth Rock. The mid-game Stealth Rock is going to be super solid in being able to break the Sash on the Serra Ledge. But they actually end up having the Aqua Jet, and as I was kind of hoping I was going to be able to set up those rocks, uh, without priority I get them up for free, but they could have finished me with an Aqua Step, and I can afford for this thing to get one speed boost and still have Sand Slash be able to outspeed. But... Uh, it doesn't end up working out there, it was just worth a try, but I'm like, okay, you know what, it's time, Sand Slash is ready, and uh, there's not a better time. I need to use the snow while I've got it, and while I don't have the opportunity to set up a Swords Dance, at least this thing's Terra does allow me to hit it for super effective damage, plus it has minus defense from the close combat, and in general, uh, Sand Slash is solid here. So, I just go for that Icicle Crash as they go into the Glamora, which is basically just a, a nice little sack switch, because as it dies, it does set up that Toxic Debris, which shouldn't make too much of a difference because as I'm looking at it here, Sand Slash is still positioned really well, even, you know, not having the attack boost. So, now they go into the Blade Fool that we've been afraid of, and here's the process. So, I'm actually just going to go for the Terra Water. What that does is, as I imagine, they probably are Focus Sash here, and they want to fire off like something like a Bitter Blade. I can actually go Terra Water to cover for that, and then knock it down to its Sash with the Earthquake, and uh, essentially stonks. So, going for the Terra out of the Ice type is a bit unfortunate for Alolan Sand Slash just because now I lose my 50% defense boost that the Snow gives being an Ice type. So, I am now Water and they actually end up going for the Endure, which is honestly beneficial for me because that means that as I go for the Earthquake, it is going to knock it down to one. And more importantly, I didn't take any damage that turn. And the reason for that is because while we do activate the weak armor, it is now going to double this thing's speed. So at this point, the Sarah Ledge is in fact faster. So luckily, however, I do resist the Fire Stab, and it just kind of depends on what their ghost type coverage is going to be. So as the mist disappears, doesn't really matter at this point. I can now just go for that earthquake. Both of us have the doubled speed. They turn out to go for the shadow sneak. They do not have a better attacking option like a poltergeist, which is amazing for us because now I take one because the Lone and Sand Slash do got that defense and uh, that's allowing us to finish off the Serra Ledge. So that is a huge threat out of the way. I imagine their set was probably Swords Dance, Endure, uh, Bitter Blade, and uh, Shadow Sneak where poltergeist would have been super clutch, but it is what it is. And at this point, now they go into the Ninetales. They have three Mons left, and Sand Slash still got some fight left in him. So here's the thing. We are, in fact, faster than our Alolan Icy friend, and they are four times weak to an Iron Head. So that absolutely busts that thing's balls. And uh, we're looking pretty solid here. The only thing is the Life Orb is going to start to rack up and knock me out. But they do have two Mons left. And also, we know they have priority in the form of this little fella right here. They probably just wanted to go into Ninetales there just to try to get as much Life Orb on me as possible. Because as they have the priority in the Aqua Jet, I'm actually able to live it, which is hilarious. And then fire off the Icicle Crash, which does kill the Duck but also is going to bring the Sand Slash Rampage 
you know, to an end. But that thing going down is amazing because honestly, that's a scary late game threat. And that base 120 defense on the slash is clutch as hell. So as both of our Terramons go down, we know that their final Pokemon is going to be the Roaring Moon, which is quite scary. Roaring Moon, one of the scarier threats in the game. However, I have a very much scarier threat, which is... <laughs> Which is freaking Wigglytuff, and obviously a joke, but in this situation, Wigglytuff's kind of the perfect fella to have around. I go into Mrs. Puff, and we're going to teach this thing how to drive off of a cliff, because uh, as I do get poisoned, doesn't really matter, and this thing does not have the booster energy attack boost. I know that I can take pretty much any attack this thing wants to bust at me, unless it's like an Iron Head. Turns out it's going to be the acrobatics we are able to live, and the four times effective Dazzling Gleam with the Oko to finish off the Roaring Moon and effectively finish off the game. MVP goes to this little marshmallow right here, even though Sand Slash puts in insane work. So that is gonna be the end of the video. Sometimes you gotta toss some Alolan Sand Slash body bags out there. Weather teams, especially with some fun sweepers like this are extremely cool to use. And Alolan Sand Slash has to be one of my favorites. So let me know what you guys thought. If you have any recommendations for Pokemon that I should highlight, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.